All right. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes. Just a couple of minutes here, waiting for people to pop on in. Hey, Carolyn. <laughs> you just saw me today. <laughs> What's up, girl? How are you? Watching for uh, Tyronica to pop on in here. Give me the go ahead. There she is. Hey, girl. How are you? You let me know when to jump in, okay? I don't know if you want me just to give people a chance to come on. Thank you. So excited. Yeah. So you let me know when to, if you want me just to give people, start anytime. Okay, great. Um, so first and foremost, let me first say hey there to Team Radiant Styles. What's up? What an honor to be here. Tyronica hit me up. Um, just the other day and was like, listen, I want you to come talk to my team. So what a privilege, what an honor. I'm really excited uh, to come and chat with you. Uh, if you don't know me, let me formally introduce myself so you know um, why I'm here. Um, my name's Heidi Bound and I am a consultant here in New York City. Yep, live right in Manhattan. Um, my A real quick little little snippet of my my paparazzi resume hello everybody um, so you know what's up I was a teacher for 23 years yep 23 years and retired uh, on June 26th at the age of 44 and I'm now working paparazzi full-time people like your very own uh, Tyronica like inspired me I was watching her, a little bit of a, you know, a little stalker-ish there, keeping an eye on her, because I'm like, I know she has a very similar story, um, and then had the honor of meeting her. I, I think I ran up to you, almost toppled you down at uh, the luau, and um, so I have been a consultant. Hey, everybody, what's up? I see some familiar names here. How you doing? Um, I've been a consultant with paparazzi since the beginning of July 2017, okay? So it's been only 16 months. Let that sink, like process that for just a minute. Um, yes, to the tire reach, I know. And, and now I jump out of bed to do my job. Tired, because I work hard, but tired. But I didn't jump out of bed when I was a teacher like I jump out of bed now, let me tell you. Um, I make my coffee and I'm just rocking a cute t-shirt and some leggings like yes <laughs> all right so my resume my resume for paparazzi after teaching for 23 years and in a profession where it was just a never-ending grind with not a great feeling of success right I found this company and in 16 months in 16 months actually in a year the last four months um, I've just been continuing with what I started in a year. In a year, I um, hit Elite. I hit Elite two days after I left that public school for the very last time. Hi, everybody. I hit Elite on June 28th. I retired June 26th. Um, this beauty is named after me. She sure is. I, of course, I had to rock her uh, on your team page today, Tyronica. And this is the Heidi named after me. I got this phone call June 12th, June 26th. I retired as a teacher. June 28th, I hit elite. So the perfect storm was created. I even give myself goosebumps when I think about it. Um, I hit Crown Club 25. I was awarded Crown Club 25 at convention in Vegas. Um, because as you know, as a consultant, uh, I, that means I had 25 of my personally sponsored and my team was like under 150 people, I think at that time. Thank you. I love it. Like, I love it. Misty Kirby nailed it when she put my name on this. Um, but I, um, lost my thought. My team was really small and I was able to hit crown club 25, um, because of how I lead my team. Right. Um, the other, what am I missing? ZPs, Crown Club 25, Elite. Oh, the reason why I'm here. Um, so in a year, in less than a year, it was around the winter. Um, and you know, some people know all of their dates, right? Like I did this on this date that I don't remember. Dates were never my forte. Um, but it was back in the winter that I hit um, Life of the Party Diamond. Here's the deal. I did not know how to crunch the numbers. I did not, when this happened, this happened because I worked hard. Um, you know, there's a whole formula to this happening, right? And 
not once did I sit down and say, well, if I recruit this many and I sell this much, this will happen. I worked hard. So that's why one of the things I want to get across today as I talk to you is that you could do all of these things if you work hard. And boy, you got a team leader that is top notch. So, um, and I know you already know that. Um, but in that time, Diamond happened, right? And I had, I guess, kept working and working. And I'm going to talk to you, of course, about how that happened. Um, but I kept working and I had people, if you know uh, Ty Parkin from Ty and Debbie, uh, Ty, uh, the Dazzling Divas, and Ty would say to me, you're passing Diamond. They're going to do something out. They have to do something higher than Diamond. You're killing it. And I was like, I don't know. I'm new to this. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, you know, this, I was in it for less than a year. I'm like, life of the, what do you, what do you mean? Um, so at convention, um, I was on the stage for Diamond, and I'll tell you this story just because, you know, a little, little personal story. Uh, Tronica, I hope you don't mind keeping it real. I was on stage. Now, I don't do heels. I see you all on that stage in your heels and looking like, mm. I had on a great dress and a pair of killer heels, and they were killing me. So I'm on the stage for Diamond, and I'm like, I need to take these shoes off. So I knew I had to go back up on the stage for Elite. So I go back to the to my seat. I'm taking off these gorgeous coach killer heels and putting on my sandals because I'm like, all right, I have to go up and walk the runway for Elite, right? That's it. This is about having fun, but it's about being smart. And I'm going to teach you a couple things today, and I want you to walk away with some strategies, right? So I'm changing my shoes into my sandals. Misty Kirby's on stage in that gorgeous white dress, you remember, and she's talking. Now I'm kind of listening, but I was all about taking off those shoes. My sister is next to me, Hilary Diaz Cruz, who's also an amazing consultant, screaming, screaming. Ah! You could hear her if you watch the video um, next to me because she's going, your name is up there, your name is up there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, there's the teleprompter, Misty's reading from it, right? So. As I'm changing my shoes, Misty Kirby's announcing Black Diamond. I cried, like every time I tell this story, I get goosebumps. So she's announcing Black Diamond and she's talking about what Black Diamond was about, right? And the next thing you know, she says, um, where are you, Heidi Bound? My name's the first one out of her mouth. And my sister's like, get up there, get up there. Now I've been on stage a lot. I did this, I'm up there for Crown Club, I'm up there for, like I was up there a lot, but I was like, oh my gosh, thank God I have my sandals on. So I run up for Black Diamond. I learned a lot that day too. You don't wear a long full sequin gown in Vegas in the Thomas and Mack Center. You will be hot, just saying. Um, so I get up there and I'm up there with Mandy Heinz. Okay, y'all know Mandy. Right? I'm up there with Mandy Heinz. I'm up there with my paparazzi idol, who I can now call a friend, um, uh, Natalie Hadley. Love Natalie. I'm next to Natalie Hadley. Everything that I do in a live, I've learned from Natalie Hadley, and I'm next to her, right? You know the other girls that are up there. Brittany's up there, right? I'm up there with these people, and Marissa, who's also a Z girl who I love, right? And Courtney, like, I'm up there with these people. I'm like, this is actually happening. And so I've been asked a million times since then, um, since that moment, how I did all of that. Like I created the perfect storm and it wasn't even on purpose, right? It was because I'm loving what I'm doing. I feel like I was handed a gift because I wanted out of the educational system. I could not keep testing kids in special education that I knew could not pass a standardized test. I couldn't do it anymore. Um, but I was working hard. That's how these things happened. Can everybody hear me? Janelle saying she can't hear me. Um, I didn't crunch numbers at the time. And as a matter of fact, I'm still not a big number cruncher. I'm just doing what works, right? So let me talk to you about that. Let me talk, bring you back a little bit to the beginning of July. I joined because I wanted to make a little extra money. What a lot of people don't know about me is that I was in another direct sales company for about 10 years. Um, excuse me with the sniffles now because I got a little teary. Um, I was with another direct sales company for about 10 years and it was a company that um, the product was great, the people were great, but you either loved the kind of thing, you were either into the kind of thing that they were selling or you weren't, right? So 
and I, I give this as sort of like a comparison. I love watching baseball, but I'm not a baseball player. So if you're coming at me with a direct sales company where you're going to try to sell me on being a baseball player, you're not going to get me as a customer. I was in a direct sales company that that was the type of thing. You were either into that niche, into that product, or you weren't. But what I did in those 10 years is I created a network, right? So when my starter kit, the $500 kit came, I had already created, I had already worked for a really long time to create not only a following, right? but a reputation of integrity, a reputation of integrity with this group of people that were watching. So I already had a name for myself. My starter kit sold out in two days. It sold out in two days. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a thing. Like I've got this, right? So what I want to talk to you about today is the fact that if you don't have it, you don't have it. I have a bling room. I run my business, this business out of a 10 by 12 uh, foot space in New York City. If you don't have the inventory, you can't sell the inventory. Thank you, Tony. That's a teacher in me. You understand. You get that, right? Um, if you don't have it, you can't sell it. And I'm doing this in New York City. This city is expensive, okay? And I'm able to do this full time because I have the product to sell, okay? So at first, I was putting every bit of what I was making into buying inventory. Now, when I first started, I did not buy every day. Okay. Tyronica just went, <gasps> I did not buy every day because I didn't get the game yet. I didn't understand. Oh, new stuff comes out Monday through Friday. I should probably try to get great pieces Monday to Friday. I didn't get that yet. Right. It didn't, it didn't click right away. Um, I was buying what I was doing though at first is I would wait till like a Friday and I would buy a big, huge order and I would get the volume discount, the 10%, okay? That's just what I was, that's how I was doing. That's what I was doing. I was a teacher full time. I was trying to make time to do sales and then, and to buy, right? Buying inventory takes time. Um, but what I found is that that wasn't the best thing for me because then I had 25 of an average piece that wasn't really sought after. So I learned quickly um, this next strategy. To reel it back to, um, this is the piece I want you to write down. I want you to walk away with this no matter what level you are at in this business. If you, you just took the tape off your starter kit and you better not be using it to like prop up your plants, okay? Take the tape off the starter kit. Whether you're at that point or you've been doing this for years, this is the most important thing and it sounds like common sense but sometimes people miss it i was doing my shows this was very early on and my sponsor Anne, she's watching me okay and she messaged me afterwards and she's like do you know how many sales you just missed out on and i'm like what are you talking about i'm like i sold i was selling everything she's like but do you know how many you missed out on and i'm like no um no she said, this is what I want you to do. She's like, you need to be keeping an eye on those pieces. Like I had one of something or two of something, right? So I might show this ring and I might have had one or two of it. But I had 10 women commenting on it. So how many sales did I miss? Not how many sales did I make? I made two. Woo, great. I sold what I had. But I missed out on eight more sales, right? Think about that for a second. Think about your lives or think about your vendor events and think about how many times you have to say, oh, I'm sorry, Tyronica, I only have two of these. Okay? Th think about it for a second. Not about the sales you've made. That's awesome. Think about the sales you've missed. You can quote me on that if you want. I had somebody quote me this morning. I was on doing a video earlier. <laughs> um, okay? Think about it for a second. What did you miss out on? Okay. So what I started doing in my lives is I would make a quick little note. And what I was finding is that my girls, and they still do. Um, let me see. Sometimes I can't read the long comments, Tarnica, just to let you know. Oh, there. Okay. It's a hot up. Yes. Um, I found very early on that I could sell like crazy on gunmetal. Gunmetal. All I have to do, when I show gunmetal in my show, I say it's gunmetal and people are like, woo, here she goes, gunmetal. Um, gunmetal sold like crazy 
um, these re these pieces that you quoted me that yes I knew somebody quoted me this morning um, these pieces that like from a distance too like I walk into a room and somebody's like who does she think she is right um, Moonstone early on sold like crazy I was m selling what I had but I was missing out on sales got me okay it's a different mindset okay now what that did for me early on is it told me, okay, I could buy one or two of that average piece, right? We all have those average, I don't even know, I'm, I'm looking at my board from last night. We all have those average pieces, one or two of them, right, early on. But then you have those killer pieces like this one, that this you need to have more of, okay? So I don't want you to go um, in debt, I don't need you going in debt, and Tyronica doesn't need you going in debt, buying merchandise, but you need to be increasing your volume in a way that's smart. You need to be looking at those pieces where you've lost sales, and one of two things. One, run to the back office. Run to the back office, because they could still be there, right? We're finding that right now. I feel like paparazzi is making a, a much larger quantity. I kind of have mixed feelings on that right now, but um, run to your back office and get more of it if it's still there or take a note and if it's something like gunmetal you need to go buy more gunmetal right does that make sense so that's how you do it it's not oh my gosh how much extra do i buy i have to buy a ton of extra no you need to buy extra and you need to do it in a way that makes sense and is smart those wooden necklaces i couldn't say it i could not sell those if you paid me to sell them, like a million, here, a million dollars for you to sell these. I couldn't do it. So I slowly started to introduce those into my lives. I would buy one or two of them. Now, even at the volume that I sell, I only buy of a wooden necklace, maybe three or four, because I have a few ladies that love them, but not everyone does, right? So I'm not going to buy 50 of those. But when a good gunmetal piece comes out, you can guarantee I'm buying some piece. There are some pieces I buy a hundred of. Here's the other piece I want you to think about. Okay, I want you to walk away with this. Your goal is not always to sell out of that piece in one show. Okay, that's not your goal. Some pieces, sure. But there are those pieces that I have. Um, the uh, looking like a million, right? Look like a million and gunmetal. It's hot. I showed it for a long time wood piece I love that there we go see and you got to be thinking differently so that's the point there with Tyronica is making think about how to get those pieces out to people right um, so that gunmetal necklace I put it in a show for a long time my people get sick of seeing it then right your new customers your new customers it's always new to them but I tuck those away for a while because old jewelry looks new to new customers you can quote that one too old jewelry looks new to new customers okay so you want to be increasing but you want to also think about what is that piece that I can sell today and I can sell it in three months now let me give you a statistic okay let me let me tell you a little number I have put into my business you ready in only inventory a quarter of a million dollars do you know how much of that is on credit cards and how much is debt zero none a quarter of a million dollars because what I was doing is taking everything my profit and the the price point of the piece and reinvesting and reinvesting and some people can't do that right you may but I was still teaching so I had that income coming in what I've realized quickly is that I need to shop daily I need to shop daily now my way of buying inventory has evolved and has changed over time um, but what I do now um, is I look at the amount of pieces that I bought or that I sold last week. Say, for example, I sell 1,000 pieces. I have some weeks where I sell 2,000 pieces. Um, last week, if, if it was 1,000 pieces, I divide that by five, and I tell myself that I can buy 200 new pieces a day, okay, this week. This is just a hypothetical number. Pretty close to the truth, though. And with that, what I'm doing then is I'm putting the profit back in the bank 
right? So my profit's staying in the bank. When I'm buying 200 pieces, I'm using that 275. Does that make sense? So I'm continuing to put in profit. I used to put in everything into inventory because you don't have it, you can't sell it. If you don't have it, you can't sell it. You need to hear that, okay? So now though, because my thought process has shifted, I'm already diamond life of the party. I've already hit it. I'll be black diamond probably by the end of January or early February. My goals have shifted. I'm now working on team building. I now want to also continue to rank up. Your goals will change, okay? But if you are looking at how to sell, how to make your lives successful, how to reach life of the party, you need to be strategic. Monday through Friday, you're shopping. If you can, if you have the capability of sinking everything into new product, then you do it, okay? But you don't want to be going in debt because that's not what this is about right? It's not. Once you can start to shift, then you follow the strategy I'm sharing with you. If you sell 500 pieces that week, then the next week you buy 100 pieces a day. You restock. You restock what you've sold and now you're putting profit in the bank, continuing with that same inventory. Does that make sense? Okay, so think it through. The other thing that, that you need to think about is how you're selling, right? So this show I did last night was a, a show where I only had one thing on each hook. But a lot of times, I will do sets. So old inventory, old jewelry is new to new customers. Take that hot new, those fringe necklaces, right? That's hot. We love those babies. And grab that pair of hoops that maybe you haven't sold and they've been sitting in your inventory for about four months. You take that necklace, you take those earrings, you put them together, you've now upselled those earrings based on that hot necklace. Following me? Okay. So your job is also to teach people, it's to teach, <laughs> I always tell my girls when I'm training, grab a notebook, um, is to teach people how this hot necklace can be worn with these earrings. And you know what you do? You put a twist on it. These earrings are from my vault. You're never gonna see them again. This necklace is brand new. Isn't this hot? But these earrings, you're not gonna get these again. So if you don't get these from me, you're missing out. So I might have 50 of the fringy necklace, but I might have five of those hoops left because I just have had them for a while. I need to clear them out. Those hoops are going to sell. The 50 necklaces may not sell in that live, so you bring them back in a month, right? because those necklaces are now new to new customers, okay? Or what happens is those necklaces, people forgot about them, right? The Pharaoh necklace, they forgot about it. And then when you bring it out again, they go, oh gosh, that's that necklace, there it is again. And I, you know what, I better get it now. I better get it now. Um, so it's being strategic, it's being smart. Shopping every day is important. I no longer buy the pieces that are kind of average. I mean, they're all cute, right? But if it feels like something, in my mind, if I say, I might sell that, I might have somebody that wants that, I don't need to buy those pieces anymore. The other day I bought four pieces, but I bought 50 of one of them, um, 50 of another one. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're, the way that you purchase shifts. Okay, the way that you purchase shifts. Purchasing daily needs to happen. How you go about it, that's what will change as you grow, okay? And, and that's kind of the bulk of what I want your takeaway to be today. If you have questions, now's the time to kind of, kind of fire them at me. Um, look at those, I mean, to sort of pull it together, right? Look at those pieces that you know your customers love. You buy those types of things. Start to stream in those pieces that maybe, you know, like the wooden for me, right? If those things weren't selling like hotcakes for you, you buy a little bit at a time because you will have that person. I have one gal that every new wooden piece, she needs it in her life. If I don't buy those, if I don't buy those, Charlotte can't buy those, right? about what you're buying, right? Why you can't miss the new releases. Let me see what she's saying. Right, 
you have to look at those and, and you know, I'm not going to keep you a really long time because we all know that they're going to drop pretty soon, right? Um, my life revolves around the new releases coming out. How do you create and build a clientele? By going live often. Um, there's also been a lot of training right now around the Facebook algorithm. And if you're not sure about that, you can do some research, you know, uh, check into that. And um, Tyronica, I'm not sure, you know, I'm sure you're aware. Um, but I've been, if you want to talk at all, you know, I don't know how much training you've done on different things. Um, I'm sure we can bounce ideas. But that whole Facebook uh, algorithm thing is huge. I've been training my team like crazy on it. Um, but it's the, in light of this conversation, how do you build clientele? It's by people knowing that you got the goods. You got the stuff, right? So if you are the gal that's got the stuff, they're going to continue to shop with you, right? Yeah, the algorithm. Yeah, that's like the magic formula right now, right? So if you have the stuff, they're going to shop with you. If, if Jenny over here wants brand new hoops and she comes to me and she says, do you have hoops? I'm going to say, yeah, what do you want? Gun metal, copper, I've got some stuff. If she goes to you and you don't have hoops, guess who she's coming to? She's coming to me, okay? So this is not about going into debt. This is not about like you blowing up a Discover card. This is about you being really smart about how you purchase. What do you customers love? You buy more of that. You gradually increase, okay? If you're doing that and you have inventory sitting, mix it in with your new. If you've been doing this for a while and you're like, oh yeah, I got this down, shift your thinking, shift your thinking in how you're buying. Yeah, build clientele by people knowing you have the stuff, right? I know, it's what it is. It sounds so simple. It's so basic, but people miss the mark because they're afraid they're not gonna sell it out in one show. That's not what this is about. It's not what this is about. It might be about that for you if you first open the starter kit, right? Because maybe you sunk your first 90, your last $99 into that starter kit. Well, then when you make that money on the starter kit, go buy more stuff. Go buy more stuff, okay? You need the hot pieces, right? If, you know, and I, and I use this, this connection, if, if Nike didn't keep coming out with new stuff, right? They didn't keep coming out with the hot new sneakers. Nike can get a killing for a pair of sneakers, right? Um, if Nike didn't keep coming out with new stuff, you wouldn't shop Nike for your sneakers, okay? Right? You wouldn't shop Nike. And our stuff looks good. Let me tell you a little story. I recently, to celebrate this, the night before this hit the website, um, this old school teacher, this retired, not old, retired school teacher, um, went into the Louis Vuitton store for the very first time. I could not shop in a Louis Vuitton store as a teacher. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even like breathe the air of the Louis Vuitton store as a school teacher in New York City. But I walked in there proud because there was a bag that I saw when we were on the diamond, on uh, black diamond trip. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna celebrate and I'm gonna buy that bag and I'm gonna do it because I've worked like crazy. Do you know I walked in that Louis Vuitton store wearing the Heidi and the girl behind the counter, it took her breath away. And when I told her it was only $25, she hardly believed me till I showed her on the website or uh, you know, I, I showed her, I'm like, this is, this is it. And you are able to market something. This product is top notch, okay? The girl in the Louis Vuitton store surrounded by bags that cost tens of thousands of dollars stopped in her tracks in New York City because of this necklace. How do you know what is the hot pieces? You have to know your customers, right? Um, you have to know your customers. Some people can sell moonstone like crazy. Some people can sell pearls. I cannot sell a pearl lately to save my life. I can't sell the pearls right now. The colored pearl, like the navy blue with the different colors, I can I can sell those. White pearls right now, I can't. So would it be smart for me to buy more white pearls? No. No. So there's also fear of missing out, right? They call it FOMO. I don't care. I'm not going to buy white pearls just because it's a new release today. And I'm like, oh no, what if I don't? 
no, I have white pearls in my inventory. I can't sell them right now. So I'm not going to spend the money on something that I can't sell right now. Does that make sense? Yes. So you want to be thinking about that. Um, the more advice, the more you'll know what sells best. Just stay consistent. Yes. It's about knowing your customer base, right? It's about knowing your customer base and it's about knowing your inventory. So if you have it, if you have it, you don't need more of it right away. Okay. And what I mean by that is I have plenty of white pearls. There you go. So for Tyronica, they sell like this. Girlfriend, I could ship you boxes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I have white pearls, right? So if new white pearls hit today, I'm not buying them. But I am going, like my husband's like, find those pieces that are really unique. Um, if you don't have a customer base yet, it's Sheila, what I said at the beginning, right? So if you don't have a customer base yet, then what I want you to do is I want you, as you're doing a live, look at not what you're selling, but what you're missing out on. For example, if you have this and you have two of them and you sold both of them, that's great. But if you had eight more people that wanted them, then your brain should be saying, sparkly things work for my group. Um, wrap and snaps. I'm going to try some wrap and snaps because they liked the wrap and snap I showed. I need to get more of them. Does that make sense? So things with bling, right? So if you could have sold eight more of these and that is your trigger to invest a little more money and if you usually buy two now you buy four but you have to shop every day so that you can see if that's the day that this or something like it that your customers would love that's the day that this comes out so if they love gold and flashy things then you're buying gold you're buying flashy and then when you're selling you're saying listen gals I know you love flashy gold pieces right the Donnelly let me show you this piece that I think you might also like and maybe this time it's silver and flashy right so it's figuring out what they love and then taking them that baby step the next step let me see just opening the box so excited to this for forever so it's taking that next step, okay? Any other questions? And hopefully you're, you're walking away with a couple little nuggets of information. People see Black Diamond and they think, oh my gosh, she must buy so much stuff. Smart. You buy smart because I want to sell it. I don't want it sitting here. I'm not, I'm in, I don't need to be building up a, you know, a building of boxes here either. How can I push fashion fix? My customers want sets now that I have them. They are only buying one or two of the set. So my advice on that, Lisa, is to do a pre-order. I always like to get a litmus test or litmus, te litmus test, litmus test, right? I thought I just took myself back to science. Yeah, I think I said it wrong, but um, you want to take that little feel, right, of what they want so if thank you um if you're only selling one or two of a set great here's the other thing you want to remember um i actually don't carry a bling bag and that's simply because i haven't quite figured out how to carry a bling bag in new york city without with it being a good thing and not causing me trouble on the train <laughs> let's keep it real um Litmus test. Okay, thanks. I'm like, that sounded funny coming out of my mouth. What do you do if you can't afford to buy every single day when you are just at consultant level and inventory isn't selling? I'm assuming it says selling out. Um, then, Victoria, you need to just continue working with what you have, but you do need to pick up some new pieces because you can take those new pieces. And it, I'm not talking you have to buy 100 pieces at a time if you're new. You bring in a few new pieces and you mix them with your old, right? New and old needs to be mixed together. How do you buy every day? Susan, I, I touched on that, so maybe watch it from the beginning. Um, if you mean financially, watch from the beginning because I gave you some strategies on that. I'm not sure if you caught me from the beginning. Okay. Looking to see. And get that feel for your, you know, do that pre-order. Here's the other thing that's happening right now, right? And this is what I want you to think about is paparazzi is making a lot of the pieces right now. Um, 
paparazzi would make them and they would sell out really fast, right? That doesn't seem to be happening as much. So there may be times where something like Fashion Fix, if people aren't biting on that immediately, it's okay. Because let me tell you, I pulled out some Fashion Fix just from the other day that was from about three or four months ago. I had just a few sets left. Now I have no sets left because those pieces at the moment, everyone had them, right? Four months later, people forgot about them and now they could get them for me and they can't get them anywhere else, right? Or at least in their mind, they feel that way. If you show a piece in a live, when should you show it again? I don't have like a, a definitive timeline on that. Um, people want like that magic formula. I don't necessarily have that for you. I think that it's just a matter, again, it goes back to if you don't have it, you can't sell it, right? And so you just rotate through. I also use hostesses. I don't want to get into a whole hostess conversation right now, but I use hostesses for some of my shows. And it also, I tailor, like this last night was tailored to what my hostess loves. So I made sure that I was able to have enough things on the board. She loves silver. She loves bangles. So I was able to rotate through and bring some stock up there because that's what um, Phyllis loved, okay? So when you do a pre-sale, if things sell out quick, quickly, I let my customers know just because you've pre-ordered it doesn't mean I can get it, okay? Doesn't mean I can get it. And there was a time, I think it may have been the life of the party, that I missed out on something and I just told my customers, I'm like, I'm really sorry, like I wasn't able to get it the way that I had hoped, but I never promise it. That's why you never take money or invoice until you have things in your hands. Old jewelry looks new to new customers, yes. I go live three times a week. I'm consistent. I go live Sundays, Wednesdays, and Friday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern time, but I do pop-ups pop at different times that are not consistent, but I do think that you need to have your consistent days and times. People need to count on you the same way they count on Grey's Anatomy. Yes, and people love that. Like, if you're like, this is from the vault and you can't get it again. Oh my gosh. I sell more of that than I do new releases. There's oftentimes I'll put my new releases away. I'll put them, I'll file them away into my inventory because everybody's showing the same pieces. I don't want to be showing the same pieces all the time. I don't go live on Instagram, although I've thought about trying it. Okay. Any other questions, Tyronica, is there anything else you want me to touch on? Or do you think that... Um, yeah, no, you can't. It's actually against compliance. Your vintage sales. Yep. And I call it the vault. I'm like, oh, these are vault pieces. And it could be something that I'm like, why do I have this? Right? You have those. Gosh, why do I have this? And then I'm like, it's from the vault. And they're like, oh, how many do you have? <laughs> it's buying large orders every Friday. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, Jennifer, I can't read the rest of your comment, but was missing out on some great pieces, I think. And then it cuts you off. I can't read the whole comment for some reason. My lives, sometimes they're, you know, sometimes I do a speed shopping, right? And other times I may be on for four hours until Facebook kicks me off. Um, but I love selling. Like this energy that you're getting from me is what I put into my lives. And I'll invite you. I always invite people um, when, I, when I train in, in other teams. You are more than welcome to come and watch my live through the lens of learning, not through the lens of buying, okay? It's not about coming and watching me so you can buy from me. You should be buying from your back office if you are a serious business person. If you wanna come and watch me um, and see what I do in a live, I welcome consultants to do that all the time because I think that's how we learn, right? But it's not about coming to buy from me you should be buying from your own back office, okay? I'm live Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, and Friday nights, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, um, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Please come watch me to see techniques, to put a notebook in front of you. I learned from Natalie Hadley. If you know her, she's a dear friend and I love her. Oh, thank you. And I would write down things that I saw her doing and, and I would emulate what she did. And because what she was doing was working and this stuff is basic. It's basic, right? Oh, thank you, Kim. 
You don't need to get fancy schmancy. People, I think, get caught up on playing games and all those things. And I do some giveaways because I have so much. <laughs> those hostess rewards are taking over my life. Um, I get double hostess rewards, right? And on, what was it, Cyber Monday, I got quadruple. They're literally taking over my New York City apartment. Um, but it's, you're welcome, you're welcome. And, you know, it's, I think we get caught up too much on the games, the this. Sell the jewelry present the jewelry, live the brand, and you will sell. Do you need a permit to sell on the streets? I don't know, honestly. That's something I would, anything like that, I recommend um, emailing compliance directly. Yeah, follow me. Don't send me friend requests. Thank you, Tyronica, for pointing that out. You are more than welcome to follow me. As a matter of fact, I've hardly been, uh, I, I haven't even been approving friend requests because I was maxed out after a convention and I've been trying to pull some uh, paparazzi consultants at, off as my friends because of the whole algorithm idea, right? Like my newsfeed was flooded with paparazzi, which wasn't helping me. Um, you're welcome. And Tyronica, hopefully um, this met your uh, expectations. And again, I cannot thank you enough. What an honor it was to get your message. Um, you thinking about me um, as somebody that could inspire your team. And I, Tyronica, I, I, I view you as an inspiration. You are a pioneer in walking away from um, a, a career, uh, an educational career, and doing this full time. And it was because of you, um, and Alicia, that I said, you know what, there are people doing the same thing. Ooh, whew, I get like teary in moments I'm not expecting. Um, that I was like, I could do this too. Like I could do this too. Um, and I made sure that I kept an eye on you and uh, on Alicia and, it, and here it is. Um, so as we continue to empower each other, that's what this is about. So thank you. Keep your eye on the new releases. You all need to shop today. It's really that simple. You need to shop today. It's going to look different from di for different people depending on what level you're on, right? Um, tears of joy. I know I've been. It's been a lot lately. Um, thank you, thank you. I did it in. Yeah, most of what I've accomplished was in the first year. Now I'm just continuing to push and grind and build. Yep. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Please follow me on Facebook. Everything that I do is public. Um, oh, Candace. Yeah, Taronica's amazing. Um, what a force to be reckoned with, right? She's awesome. And um, feel free to follow me. Feel free to watch my shows. And again, it's not about coming in there to buy. I have plenty of customers, but it's about you learning. Okay? And uh, Tyronica, if you have any... What would be easier for me, because a lot of times when I do trainings and I get bombarded with a lot of messages... If, Ty if there's anything, Tyronica, that comes as far as uh, questions that people have, if you could maybe be the filter and let me know. Um, if anything comes up that's more specific than what I've talked about, you can um, certainly give me a yell because um, it's not a closed book once this is finished. Okay? So go out there, rock your business. Remember, if you don't have it, you can't sell it. Have a great rest of your Monday. Bye! <laughs> You're welcome.